Um, you know, not to be self-serving and bring this back to my book, but um, I think as John suggested, uh, uh, as Weber said, you know, I think bureaucracy is unavoidable in mass society with large scale enterprises. I mean, it, these things need to be organized. So what I'm, what I'm always caring about is how can the individual be an individual? Or if you're a young person, how can you become an individual? And as I say in the preface to the book, when I had to think about what all these disparate essays had in common, I think that's what they have in common, is that I believe in this idea of being an individual, which means being unique and insisting on your uniqueness, and if need be, um, taking some hits for insisting on your uniqueness, like when you're a whistleblower. Let's also remember that the, the phenomenon Lena was describing in higher ed is relatively new. So there used to be more faculty than administrators, right? And in the 1990s, those lines crossed and the number of faculty uh, um, uh, uh, declined and the number of administrators went up. And, okay. you know, this too, I mean, again, Weber could have predicted him in some ways, but the timing suggests to me that, again, this wasn't just a product of some broad scale modernity force. I mean, these were human beings making very explicit decisions about what they valued. Um, and so, you know, now there are state universities. I read recently the University of Maryland had 12 vice provosts. Wow. And, and that's that my... the, I mean, and that's kind of a mid-size. It's not nearly as big as, say, the University of Texas or the University of California. Um, right. Uh, you know, what do all those people do? That's a good question. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't hazard an answer, but one of the things they do is they hire other little deans or deanlets as we call them, right? Uh, and, and they make themselves indispensable in their, in their own perverse way uh, um, because you have to now go through them in order to do the things that you want to do. Uh, incidentally, University of Maryland is one of my alma mater. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maybe you'll be a vice provost there one day. Right? Any, any others are? Does anyone have any suggestions on how to turn this around? How to turn around the, the, this this administrative elephantiasis in academia? Absolutely. I mean, people, you know, pe many people have been complaining about it for a long time, which suggests that nothing is ever going to happen. I mean, I suppose you could have state legislatures since, you know, three quarters of college students are at public universities, you could have state legislatures putting their foot down. I'm very reluctant, you know, I know that if state legislators had their way, a lot of them would just want to abolish tenure and start firing left-wing professors. But um, if they're gonna do anything, I would like to see them do that. Let's just, you know, just mandate University of Maryland, the Maryland state legislator says, I don't care who you fire, but you have to fire 50% of your administrators. Is that going to happen? No. Probably not. And, and you know, if I may just add, it's an incentive in the system because when you hire a new dean, a new provost, assistant dean, whatever administrator, they come in tenured and they earn more than I am earning after working there for 20 years. Tenured. And I work for my tenure for six years. The other thing that I would do if I were king and we don't have enough time this afternoon to enumerate all the reasons that won't happen, but I would require all these people to teach. Like, like Lino said, they came in with tenure, they're scholars, right? I mean, they have academic backgrounds and credentials, um, uh, not a full load, right? But I think everyone who's at the university who works at the university should teach something to somebody. We could do that. Uh, we're, we're not going to, but we could. It's a lot yeah. harder to teach than to do probably anything else that happens on campus. Yes, it really is. Hard. There's a book about this by Gens ben, uh, ben Ginsberg, which is called The Fall of the Faculty. And basically, you've got these lines that cross in the 90s. So, you know, um, you've, 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 you've got the faculty going down and the administrators going up and they sort of cross in the mid 90s. Now, just to be clear to some of the listeners, I mean, you know, all administrators aren't like vice provosts uh, of, of blah, blah, blah at the University of Maryland. I mean, some of them, for example, work in student health services. So an administrator is just defined as a staffer, is defined as anybody who is not a professor. And I often emphasize to my students, you know, like I like staffers, 
You know, I mean, I like administrators, we need them. And I think, frankly, the mental health apparatus, it's one of the best things that's happened at universities since I was a kid. So it's not that I feel that they're all useless or they're all extraneous. And I think we have to remember that there's, to use the loaded term, a great diversity of administrators with different functions. Yeah. And um, uh, John, back to Dr. Davis question. So you don't see any of this changing in the near term? Uh, well, look, I mean, I'm a historian. I have a hard enough time figuring out what happened yesterday and uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I, I, I can't, uh, I'm not a soothsayer, but I don't see anything in the tea leaves suggesting that we're going to have fewer administrators for a lot of the reasons that Lino implied. I mean, we've created this perverse incentive structure, right? Um, where, you know, the most status and the most dollars and the most power are located in these offices. And so that's what we've actually incentivized faculty to become. That's the highest prize. I have a couple of my, oh no, three of my colleagues who were concert pianists. They are now deans. They are now administrators. Oh, because yeah. Boy, how can that be? Yeah. How can yeah. that be? Well, I think the attraction of the power and the money and the prestige right. is there. And they are administrators, they're no longer performing. I know, but I know, but who sits down at a piano when they're 15 or 16 at their first concert and thinks, well, this is good, but I'd really like to be a dean one day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, <laughs> on to our next conversation then.